Hello indie game fans! In the big content patches of last month, we did have some returning fan favourites, more early access content drops and a surprise or two coming up in this video. Let's begin with Helltaker Anniversary Update. Probably as self-explanatory as they come, but a free puzzle game that absolutely blew up in popularity, celebrated one year on Steam, releasing a new bonus chapter, so check back in with this. And there's my invitation. Alright, so Blood Rain isn't exactly indie, but this third person action title from the early 2000s is a fan favourite, releasing the Terminal Cut remaster late last year. But I do think that older games are interesting to go back to, especially for indie game fans. It put out the ultimate update, which should be the last significant patch, including balancing changes and feature upgrades that makes this the way to play the game in 2021. Mother of God, what is that? I'm gonna tear her apart. One of the cutest and most chaotic new local multiplayer titles is Boomerang Fu where adorable food items slice each other to pieces using boomerangs, releasing the free Grilling Spree update, which adds two new characters in burger and hot sauce, new arenas, cosmetic unlockable outfits, and the usual improvements, where I do think that the name itself is pure genius. Another month, another appearance for the not so indie Don't Starve Together, where even I'm impressed with the consistency of the team in releasing an update almost every single month, where Eye of the Storm was the final chapter of the Return of Them story arc, adding something called the Moonstorm event, although details are scarce, but enjoy the lovely animated trailer as always. I enjoyed the roguelite platformer Eagle Island from 2019, which added a free expansion named Twist, where the developers do a great job at explaining this. An unexpected twist to the award-winning retro platformer Eagle Island. Experience a brand new story mode, introducing young islander Fia and her trusted companion Kusako. Discover over 45 new handcrafted minigame style levels. Race to the finish, overcome obstacles, and escape harsh environments with brand new abilities. Face off against bosses with power you've never seen, and restore peace to the island of Yulu. Play your way with an abundance of accessibility and difficulty options to fit your adventure. And the twist? Owners of the original Eagle Island game will receive the Eagle Island Twist update for free! Twice the fun, all in one! Soar and explore in Eagle Island Twist! Hey, remember Fall Guys? Well, apparently it's still quite popular, releasing Season 4.5, which expands upon the futuristic setting of Season 4, adding two new maps, more variations, and even custom lobbies, which makes it easier to play with friends.
Human Fall Flat continues to churn out content, this time being the forest level from a community creator, where you're exploring the woodlands and there are minecarts, mountains and ravines, where I'm absolutely amazed at how popular this game is, with over 105,000 Steam reviews as of recording, so great job by the team. Weird trailer for Iron Harvest Operation Eagle, which does not have gameplay, but it does show off the red, white and blue of the American faction in this alternate history world, where the American Union of Usonia rose in power as their European counterparts battled it out in the Great War and now seek to establish themselves in this brave new world, including a full new 7 mission campaign, new units and more. I did enjoy the Norse RTS Northgard from 2018, where they continued to put out additional playable factions, this time being the Clan of the Squirrel. When the Pandora virus struck, we at least had the safety of the skies, even as new threats emerged in what was once our most protected settlements, or as new, twisted forms of life rose up on land. The XCOM-like Phoenix Point from the original creator of XCOM did not manage to knock Phyrexis off its throne, but is a neat title with some new considerations, releasing the Festering Skies paid DLC which of course adds Flying Mutants, a new original campaign, cutscenes, weapons and a big bad in the behemoth form the content drop here. So once more, we take to the skies, but this time, we are not alone. Blink and you miss it, but the deck building strategy game, Quantum Protocol did have a crossover with CrossCode, adding some of those characters to the game as playable cards, so I'm guessing that the CrossCode developer is a fan of this game, so if you trust them, check this one out. Sick trailer for Ring of Pain Mimics Horde, so enjoy. Huge free update, content feast, 80 items, 15 creatures, special rooms and hidden features, daily dungeons, we have more, and new achievements to win for. A huge free update to obtain. Share the word of Ring of Pain. I love Rogue Legacy and its sequel is shaping up nicely in early access with the Drifting Worlds update, where this developer has done a great job with these. We're back to unveil the Drifting Worlds, our third major content release for Rogue Legacy 2. From new features that extend replayability to massive optimization work, we've got a ton of things in store for this update. Chief among them is the opening of the Drift House, a curious dwelling that holds the mysteries of both space and time. There's also a host of new content, including classes, traits, skills, and a brand new biome to explore, the Sun Tower. So let's get to it. The Sun Tower is a deadly region that will test the dexterity of even the most seasoned players. You must hone all of your skills to scale its perilous heights and discover what fuels the sinister world of Rogue Legacy 2. 
one false step could send a hapless hero plummeting to the depths below. Fortunately, we're introducing two new classes that are more than up to the task. For the Drifting Worlds, we're experimenting with how far we can take things with two radically new classes, the Lancer and the Boxer. The Lancer is an unorthodox champion that attacks slowly while retaining hypermobility. Charge up your Dragon Lance and take to the skies. Dip and dive past enemy projectiles in the air, then counterattack with a devastating strike. The thrust is powerful, but you can't be too reckless. A misaimed launch may send you bouncing harmlessly off walls, or into a bed of spikes. A class that pushes the boundaries of the Rogue Legacy mythos, the Boxer is a potent pugilist that likes to get up close and personal. Pull off a rapid flurry of jabs to make the enemy see stars, then launch them into each other with an explosive knockout punch. For the boxer, more really does mean merrier. Sitting derelict at the docks since the early access launch of Rogue Legacy 2, the Drift House is finally opening its boarded doors. It's currently the home of Charon's Chthonic siblings, who each bring their own twist to the Rogue Legacy universe. One of our major goals for Rogue Legacy 2 was to ensure the post-game content was as diverse as the initial playthrough. To fulfill that vision, we're introducing Elpis, the Bearer of Hope, an enigmatic figure that can transport you back and forth between threads. Each thread represents a new game plus level, and traversing them comes at a cost. Not only do enemies get harder, but players must change the rules of the world through a new system called Burdens. Burdens allow you to customize your New Game Plus experience by letting you choose how the challenge is raised. From increasing enemy damage, to altered room mechanics, to encountering new and empowered bosses, it's up to you how the experience changes. But greater risk also brings greater rewards. Increased level caps, better loot drops, and additional lore await you with each higher thread. Tended by Jiras the Caretaker, Erebus is a region full of festering nightmares that the player must subdue. Engage in specially curated challenges to truly test your skills, and earn unique trophies when triumphant. These encounters are difficult, but scouring the kingdom may reward you with handicaps that give you an edge. The Threads of Fate and the Scars of Erebus represent only the beginning of what's to expect in the Drift House. There's a lot of space within those rustic walls, and we have plans to bring a ton more with each new content release. With this update, we wanted to make the world feel a little more alive. So now all your companions on the docks have a story to tell. Life goes on while you're away, so take a moment or two to relax and catch up with the colorful characters you've met on your journey. We're also moving the Curio Shop out of Experimental and expanding it with Fabled Weapons, extremely powerful items with dangerous drawbacks. Wield the Furies Hammer and drive through your foes as a spinning tornado. Or wield the Enkindled Gauntlets to launch fireballs with reckless abandon and set the world, including yourself, aflame. Keep your eyes peeled as these weapons are only available for lucky players that come across them during their adventures. When Rogue Legacy 2 first launched, we knew it only scratched the surface of what we wanted to do. But as the world gets bigger, so does the challenge of ensuring a smooth gameplay experience. We've spent more time optimizing the drifting worlds than every previous patch combined by revamping the entire backend. This task is so large, we're still not done. And while our quest for better performance is never ending, we hope players will appreciate the steps we've taken so far. The Wobbly Physics title, Totally Reliable Delivery Service, is a silly, fun little game where the Rally update adds racing events to the game, making it a race against the clock and your friends with the usual wacky shenanigans. An impressive tycoon game chugging along very nicely in early access is Workers and Resources Soviet Republic, one that I don't see enough people talking about but has a massive 8,000 Steam reviews as of recording, releasing Update 7 which added helicopters, support for underground construction, dynamic weather, wind and solar power stations and more, making it a worthy challenger to city skylines.
Valles, I thought this city was falling into the sea. Now everyone I meet thinks it should have. But not me. Some people think Nivalis is a place you have to survive. But here, I thrive. The exploration driving adventure game Cloud Punk impressed that launch last year with a fantastic central narrative around being a no questions asked type of delivery driver. We did put out a free first person mood update, which was the best way to explore and immerse yourself in the cyberpunk city of Nivalis. The developers are back with City of Ghosts, set after the events of the base game and has been described as more of a sequel than DLC. It takes place in a more dangerous version of the city where tensions are running high, where among your problems are a rival delivery corporation, a secret society of AI worshipping zealots, debt collectors and a homicidal chimeric cyborg who is after you. Koro was right. This is a city of ghosts and if I stay here any longer, I'll become one too. This is where we're headed. Perhaps secretly the best cyberpunk game of 2020, play the base game if you have not, and if you did, be sure to get this DLC as well. For more cyberpunk indie games, check out this video and I will see you after the jump. Come on Chemis, time to take the new body out for a test run.